just have a cup of coffee, then I'll go. Hey, welcome to coffee time. First one in Armenia. First thing I want to do is thank the contributors, uh, Patreon, the GoFundMe. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. Uh, to those of you who haven't, please subscribe. I'm running about 82% of the people that watch videos are not subscribed. So, come on. Okay, I got a lot of questions and a lot of comments recently. And I'll probably do a video coming up dedicated to just answering some of those. But one of them, um, I thought I would address in this coffee time because it may have been misleading and certainly with no intention. When I was talking about the internet I was getting, I want to make it clear, uploading videos is probably the most resource hog that you can have. Unless you're specifically uploading good sized videos, you don't need the kind of internet I need. And it doesn't, if you're doing all kinds of work, if you're doing video conferencing, you don't need what I need. So when I talked about it, difficult to get the particular internet I need in Armenia, it's because of my requirement. Everywhere I go, I run into that. Uh, in the US, it's an issue. So, to be clear, in Armenia, you can get broadband all the way up to 100 megas per second. Uh, and last I knew, that's about what you get in most places in the United States. The difference in broadband is a difference that affects me. Fiber optic, you get a relatively equal upload and download. In you know, my case, it's important. In almost everyone else's case, that's not really so important. And if you get DSL, and let's say you get 50 megabytes per second, your download, like streaming video, uh, watching TV, is no problem. It's more than fast enough. 20, even 10 will, will do that without any problem. And you can get up to 100 here. And, you, and for upload speed, let's say you got 20 um, on DSL. Your upload speed is still going to be somewhere between 3 and 7 megabytes per second, which is more than enough for almost everyone out there, which is why it's what's predominantly used in Ecuador and here. But I did want to point out the difference in the stratus um, and I'll go into more detail as per request on what that actually means. So getting broadband high-speed internet in Colombia is absolutely not a problem. It's everywhere. It's everywhere you go. It's every hotel. If you rent a short-term apartment, let's say you're going to come here for a month, you can get yourself a short-term apartment. It's going to have internet with it, so you don't have to worry about signing up for anything. It's just part of the utility. So. And that's actually something relatively easy to do in Colombia. Also, keep in mind that I was talking specifically about Armenia, which is a very small city. If you go to Medellin or Bogota, you've got a much wider access to fiber optic if you actually needed it. And the other topic I want to talk about is Armenia itself. And just point out a couple things about Armenia. I mentioned um, friendly people and some of the reasons why I like it, which are emotional. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Armenia itself. First, it was founded in 1889, and it was founded by a guy who was actually kind of running away from the law. His name was Ocampo. Ocampo. He had a nickname of Tiger Killer. He was known for hunting tigers which is what they're called here. They're actually jaguars, and those used to be very, very common throughout Colombia. Uh, now you pretty much, they've beaten back from all the civilized areas, but it was a very common thing at one time, and so that was his nickname. He founded Armenia on 100 pesos that he had borrowed, and he borrowed it to set up a trading post. And Armenia grew from there. In its first year, it got up to 100 people, and it, you know, grew fairly fast after that. So where did the name Armenia comes from? Because everybody said, well, Armenia, that's a country in Europe. That's where the name came from. 
It was kind of a solidarity move. There was a, uh, a mass genocide that took place in Armenia, and out of sympathy, they renamed the city of Armenia to Armenia, and the only monument found in Colombia that uh, talks about that atrocity is located here in Armenia. Now, Armenia is one of the top two tourist locations in all of Colombia. And that's because there's so much going on here. Uh, it's in the heart of coffee country. You've got the Coffee Park, which is like uh, Colombian Disney World. you got Panaca, which is uh, get in and get your hands dirty on how people did things originally. You can ride horses, you can watch them make panela, which is kind of their version of a honey, which dries into a cake, or uh, you can uh, grind it up to be like a sugar. So there's a lot going on. You've got the, the quaint town of Salento. After World War II, they brought in a ton of leftover Jeeps. And to this day, those Jeeps are used. Now, it's certainly not the norm, but they're used out in the country because there was nothing better, and to this day, there really isn't much better. And it's become very traditional. And as a matter of fact, now it's actually become boutique, touristy. Uh, there's some gorgeous Jeeps around here. In 1999, there was one hellacious earthquake about 17 miles south of Armenia. Felt all over the place. It was about a seven, I believe it was. You wouldn't think would be that bad, but what happened was that basically the city of Armenia, the center of Armenia, just crumbled. It just fell apart. After that earthquake, there's new standards of earthquake construction that is uh, really adhered to throughout Colombia. I noticed that in Manizales. There were about 2,000 people lost their life in, in that earthquake. Now that was in 1999. Today, this place is thriving and booming and there's absolutely no sign of it. And that's where it got its nickname of Miracle City because everything changed overnight. Uh, they're very industrious, hardworking people. Capitalism is alive and well here. The city being rebuilt was a direct result, direct proof of that. In contrast, if you look at the earthquake that took place in Ecuador along the coast, it's where, what, two, three years later, almost nothing has been done. Now, I've mentioned a number of times already about the weather, and to me, the weather is perfect. Now, everybody talks about spring-like weather, no matter where you go, whether it's Medellin or it's Cuenca, and, and I've done a couple videos on it, particularly in Cuenca, where they talk about spring-like weather, but I'm saying, yeah, spring, like if you're in northern Canada, I mean, it's, it gets actually pretty cold there, and it's fairly often, and it rains most of the year. Now, it's, I'm not saying it's a bad climate. It's actually a very nice climate. It's refreshing. You never sweat. Um, I like the climate. But here, you have something a little bit different. It's a little bit warmer. We're at an elevation of about 5,100 feet. But we have unique weather patterns here. And so there's always a breeze going on. So even on the hottest day, uh, I, you never really see it without some kind of cooling breeze, which is very nice. About as hot as it gets is around 82 degrees. And about as cold as it's gonna get is around 62 degrees. Most of the time, you're running right in the 70s. Even on days when it's, it gets up in the 80s, it never gets very high in the 80s. Like I said, I think the high is about 82. Even on those days, that temperature doesn't last long. It just, you know, maybe an hour or two, plus you have that breeze coming in, and then it drops right back down. Uh, this morning, right now, we're in a, in a little kind of a warm spell. And this morning, supposedly it was around 80 degrees, but by now, which is around 11 o'clock, it's already down into the 70s. So it's never really oppressive heat and it's easy to get out and walk around. If you don't wear a jacket, it's never gonna get that cold so it doesn't really matter. Now as to rain, uh, you have rainy seasons. Now, basically what you have is 
April and May, it's rainy. And the rainiest month of the year is generally in May. And then it dry, it's dry again, and it picks up again in September, October, and November. So those five months are the months where you have rain going on. I don't mean torrential downpour rain all the time. You might get an occasional thunderstorm, but you wake up in the morning and it's, it's sunny. You get into the afternoon and maybe it rains for a half an hour. If it's in a particularly rain-filled pattern, you might get rain for a couple hours. It's rare to get it all day long. Now, yesterday, the day before, was really kind of an unusual time where it was really bright and sunny in the morning and in the afternoon it got to the rain. But it rained on and off throughout the afternoon and then early evening it was one hellacious thunderstorm. I mean lighting up the sky it, and that went on for about an hour or so. Pretty spectacular but pretty unusual. But you're gonna get you're gonna get patterns that are going to fluctuate and go kind of out of the norm, you know, occasionally. But what can you expect? Mostly sunny, bits of rain here and there, and temperature in the 70s. That's what the norm is, year out. Personally, I love it. Here, when they say you don't need heating or air conditioning, it's actually true. It was funny in Cuenca when you go there and they say, ah, you don't need heating and air conditioning. None of the houses have it. Because everybody that's from there, I mean, they bundle up in all kinds of blankets. Uh, they'll put 15 blankets, not exaggerating, 15 blankets on their bed. But you have the gringos come in and they have this idea that, well, it's spring-like weather, you don't need heat and air conditioning, and then they start freezing and they're scrounging around trying to buy electric blankets and little ceramic heaters because it gets pretty cold and it's not just now and then, it's fairly often. Uh, here, you don't need heat, you don't need air conditioning because you truly don't. On one of the hotter days, or periods of time, one of the hours where it might get, you know, up into 82. First of all, it's really not bad uh, unless you're standing directly in the sun. But as I said, you have a breeze. Worst case, you might want to get a fan, but I never have considered it. And I've been here a lot of times. So that's it for today. I'll see you soon.